to me, that's a case in point where the big physical nature of is applauding the acting. Wow. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. And you fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. Now, for those of you who follow my show for quite some time now, you probably know that I'm usually a very positive person. I always try to focus on the good things in life and, of course, also NBA basketball. But when it comes to today's NBA, I got to be honest, I'm very critical because of obvious reasons. And part of the reason why today's NBA isn't what it used to be is Adam Silver. But I never mentioned him once on my show. And I wasn't planning on to, but I saw a recent interview and we have to talk about it. But before we start with that, let me ask you guys for a small favor. If you like the show, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, so I know that you enjoy the content. And I would say, come on, let's get right into it. So, as I mentioned before, now Adam Silver, to me, I personally think that he, I mean, I never met him, but I think he's a nice person. When I, when I see him in interviews, he always seems to be very respectful, a uh, smart person, very well mannered. So, from that angle, I don't want to approach him in any way. I don't know him personally, as I said, but he seems to be a good guy. But we also have to judge him for his actions, and he's responsible for the NBA today, he's the commissioner, so he's in charge of everything. And now, as you know, I'm a very, very, very critical fan of today's NBA, simply because I know what the NBA used to be and what it, what the product NBA can be and what it is today. It, it, for me, it's un, unwatchable. I still watch it every now and then in hopes that something has changed because in my heart of heart I want the product to be good so I can watch it and enjoy it because it has been my life for so many years but it is devastating to watch the entire thing now I zapped into the all-star game uh, not too long ago and it was the worst that I've ever seen and I was literally done I was literally done I, I thought okay I'm not gonna watch until the playoffs and hope that something good will happen then I saw an interview of Adam Silver uh, on CNN talking with Charles Barkley and I could not believe what I was hearing and I want to show you guys what clip I'm talking about and then I want to tell you what is exactly robbing me the wrong way let's take a look kind of like special endings so we went back to 48 minute game we talked to players before the game and you're right I mean I, I had fun I think fans had fun this who were there weekend. and seeing players and it was a great weekend but it wasn't a basketball game right. and and had I not seen what happened this year I think we are ready to do U.S. First International. I'm just wondering now, and it's a good conversation to have, whether this generation of players, and even and the teams are complicitous too, because nobody wants them to play hard at nobody the All-Star Game. Nobody wants them to get hurt. Nobody wants them to get hurt. Yeah. They see it as a mid-season break. I think of something that was a huge attraction, for example, Sabrina Steph Curry against Steph. And Sabrina. That I was mean, my favorite. You know, that was a highlight. I mean, I mean, it says so much about the game. Yeah. You know, I think of again our generation. You know, Billie Jean King, Bobby Riggs, where it was the battle of the sexes. This was the opposite. This was, as Sabrina said, just two great shooters yeah. out yes. on the floor. So I think maybe as opposed to trying to create a super competitive basketball game, which I'm not sure the teams or the players really want at that say, moment, do you think we should do more fun. Into it? No, you, well, because... you know, essentially, I've talked to, and I'm sure you have too, I talked to a lot of players after the game, and it wasn't, I didn't get the sense that they went out there and said, well, we know what the league wants, and we know they want us to, and TNT wants us to play hard, but we're just not going to do it. I think it's just sort of, once they got out there, I think particularly young players, they see it as, again, a mid-season break. So, I don't even know where to start. Now, obviously, he was talking about the All-Star game. Now, the first thing that is really, really mind-boggling to me, he says that he basically ex accepts that the generation has changed and that they... Uh, that they approach the game in a different way and maybe it's time to find some other things how to make the uh, the game interesting come on man you are in charge of those people those people are getting 
paid a lot of money to serve the fans. You guys, and this is directly to the players, you guys are getting paid millions of dollars. Millions. You have so many privileges in your life. You are getting a lot of money. You're getting all the women in the world. You are getting all the fame. You are, get, you are getting paid to play the game that we would play for free, that we do play for free. So, and you are not willing to serve the fans and give them a competitive game? And this is what, what, why I'm criticizing Adam Silver. Because you are the commissioner of the league, you are in charge and you are in the position to make people do what you want. That is, if you are an employer, and yes, the, the, the players are hired by, by uh, the teams, but the overall umbrella is the NBA. If Adam Silva really wants the players to play competitive in the All-Star game, he could. 100% he could. Every player is paying a fine if they, if they, uh, for example, have a flagrant foul or if they um, insult the referee. The NBA tells them, hey, you got to pay the fine. The NBA players pay the fine. Do they like to pay the fine? No, but they have to. Why? Because the NBA makes them. So, and you're telling me that you are not capable of getting the players to play competitive basketball in an NBA All-Star game? This is bull. Hmm. To me, this is a, it's just a cheap excuse. So I'm, look, now we all know David Stern, back in the day, every human being has his good sides and some sides which aren't that great. I'm not saying that uh, David Stern was perfect, but the one thing I can really tell you guys is that he was very, very respected and people would, okay, some exceptions, <clears throat> Dennis Rodman, but players would listen to what David Stern would say. and. There, there, there weren't even thoughts of disobeying what the uh, what the NBA asked from the players. And I 100% agree. I understand that the new generation from a mindset is totally different than our generations and the people that came before. But still, if they are, if they are working under the umbrella of the NBA, they have to do what the NBA wants them to do. So there, there is no business in the world where you are getting a lot of money and you, uh, and you are employed and you can do whatever you want. If your boss says, hey, this and that, you have to do this and that or you lose your job or you quit. But that to me, what Adam Silver said is a cheap excuse. And the All-Star game, I'm sorry, but what has that to do with basketball? Which will be my next point already. Now, what I've seen in the past couple of years in the NBA, and this is why I also, and please don't get me wrong, I don't want to hate on Adam Silver, um, but I have to criticize because I simply think that he is ruining basketball. The NBA has so much power all over the world. This, if, if, if children in Africa, in the US, in Europe, if they grow up, they always prioritize the NBA towards their own, uh, their own country. Yeah, and, and everybody looks towards the NBA. And I, as a former basketball coach, I used to coach until two years ago, I could see the impact the NBA has on young players and how fundamentals get lost and how players uh, travel so lot because they see certain moves in the NBA and believe that this is real basketball, that egoistic basketball, ball hugging, uh, three-point shots from, from all over the place, even though they can't shoot that well. Uh, they believe that this is real basketball. And the first thing that is really driving me crazy is how in the world can Adam Silver, who is the boss of the referees, how can he allow the NBA players to travel that much? There are rules. Basketball, the game that, that is so old, it has rules. Why is the NBA ignoring the rules? Why are you allowing players to do whatever it does? For me, and I'm and I, I am 100% sure that there are millions of fans who also agree, even players and fans who are no old school fans the way I am and that most of you guys are. Basketball has rules and those rules should go for everybody. It's, they should go for everybody. The NBA should not be above the rules. And that Adam Silver is not doing anything against it, sorry, but that is terrible. It is terrible. I'm sorry I'm getting worked up, but this this is it's really driving me crazy. Like like most of you guys probably will understand and feel this. If you grew up with basketball, and basketball was my my biggest love of my life. So and and we all knew how beautiful the sport can be, and I can 
it's tough for me to accept that the NBA got so soft and all this kind of stuff, but okay. But that the rules are getting ignored, sorry, but it's terrible. It's terrible. We are allowing players to travel, to double dribble, to flop, to to uh, be uh, to to. Um, we're getting technical fouls for if somebody just opens his mouth. The NBA product is getting worse and worse. And Adam Silver is totally focusing on the wrong things. Talking about, yeah, we should uh, we should more uh, we should integrate more WNBA players. Man, this is not the solution. Yeah, it's 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 nice, but this is not the solution of fixing the NBA. And I really really feel that I mean, he's a smart person. He probably knows. I mean, thank God Charles Barkley and some of the guys are even on NBA TV complaining about it. So Adam Silva definitely, definitely knows it and hears it. But I have to believe that he doesn't care. He simply doesn't care. I would like to know what you guys feel about that. And because I don't want to end this video in this terrible way, I found a beautiful interview of Matt Johnson and Larry Bird on the David Letterman show. And this is how I want to end the video. Everybody says it's the best. You think about Michigan, we're right there with Indiana. And I saw our, how we were taught to play the game, both Larry and I, and then the way we wanted to play the game as individuals. And yeah. so we're mirrors of each other. Uh, I may smile a little bit more, but <laughs> the way we played the game of basketball was exactly the same because we would do anything to win we didn't care about scoring points we cared about winning the game and making our teammates better yeah. and that's why i think that you know oh thank you we were able to change not only basketball but we were able to change the nba too